Welcome to the Religiously Offensive Podcast. Such a muggle. <laughs> I'm a muggle. <laughs> Heard it here, folks. <laughs> and I'm the worst. That. So we had this conversation earlier. What um, <sighs> when you eat vegetables? Oh, here we go. <laughs> this guy. Do you think? Do you think they're in pain? Do you think they're like, <laughs> like, because <laughs> when you cut, when you, you know how they say like, I'm oh, not the, entertaining this. The fresher. <laughs> The fresher you get, like, greens and stuff, they say it's, like, still living. It's, like, the best for you to eat it that way, right? Like, living like plants. You pick it off a tree and you just... Yeah, the raw, the more the raw, the better, right? The, the vegetables have souls? No, 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 I'm not going no, that far. No, they do not. A lot of people say dogs don't have souls. I mean... They definitely feel pain. I beg to differ. There's they feel, a difference they for feel sure. Pain, they definitely feel pain. But Big you think vegetables do? They just don't have a way to... Express it? Yeah. I don't know. Did That's you ask no your vegetables me, during lunch? No, because they can't talk, <sighs> Gabby. That's the whole point. They can't express themselves. <laughs> Let's see what Duck Duck Go says about That's that. That's a no for I me, say dog. If they can't express themselves and they can't talk, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> Just typing this question into Duck Duck Go, I feel like. Who you ever, cares, Gabby? You ever see those funny streams or cl like threads about like people? Um, <laughs> insensitive <laughs> trying to <laughs> so I don't good. even remember what it was about but it's like something about getting good. pregnant and like it's what? just I don't know some of the questions are just uh, you know just people ask the questions and you're just like that yeah. person probably just shouldn't even be allowed to like own like things create. or drive a no, car knows that video like, that dude that dude was just like <laughs> <laughs> reading the questions. It was that exactly. African dude. Yeah, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, people, I can't remember what the questions were though. They were about like oh, I know. getting pregnant. It was the dumbest thing. Every time you're just like Right. It was You're like if if I have sex with my wife, will the baby get pregnant or something? Like, <laughs> just, yeah, I just gotta look it up now. Oh it's gosh. just the most ridiculous. Yeah, the most absurd. Wait, it's just like what? That's oh in the same gosh. camp as can vegetables feel pain? That's not actually. <laughs> oh well, check this out. Theguardian.com, which is clearly reputable. Yeah, I was about to say. Who cares? So a Who number cares? of studies have shown that plants feel pain. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> JJ I told me you. A side eye. I told you because because it, the whole thing is like they they secrete like poison and different things like that. Yeah. To you know, certain plants do that when you eat them. Sure. So it's like a a reaction to being eaten. They, they do that to protect let me themselves. Ask, let me ask you this. So if they don't experience anything, <laughs> how do you? Negative, why in the world? I'm not saying well, they don't experience. I'm and saying if they, they experience don't feel. pain, then vegans are the worst of all of us. <laughs> right? If they can't express Murders. that they're going through pain, which were your words, how do you do a study on plants to find out if they're yeah, going through I'd pain? Yeah, I'd like to see how I would assume how they, you know, that you, they need you to figure out like, if a plant has nerves and a nervous system. I think the really. largest the largest living organisms like fungi, right? Isn't there like yeah, the myo considered uh, yeah, it's this and big it goes network forever under the earth. Yeah, everything's connected. And so, like one of the like the and, the and the plants have the ability to communicate from one to the next, and then like they'll physically like do things or grow a certain way to protect themselves of this and that. So it's like they're clearly living at one point. They are. So, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, okay, say maybe not when you eat them, but like when you kill a plant, you're killing just like you kill an animal. So it's like, do we just care about the animals that are big and look like us? Well, clearly we kill ants. I mean, so that's, yeah. yeah, that's an interesting. But it's weird because I forget what it's called. There's a name for it, but there like is. we tend to like care more about bigger animals. 100%. I forget what it is. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If you hit your hit a deer with your car, yeah, you'll feel way worse than if you go outside and step on a roach. Yeah. Well, the deer, that, the deer that totaled to my car, I got real mad about. I was kind of like, "Well, you're dead." You deserved it for running out on the freaking road and hitting my car. I saw a car run over a squirrel the other day, and oh, it that's sad. snapped my heart in half, dude. Uh, yeah, that's tough. That's I, I sad. saw it happen. Uh, it's, it's tough with squirrels. Right? Because it's, it's almost, like you try just... to avoid them, and that's where they end up. Yeah, and they try to—you're both avoiding so each other. That's how you know. Yeah. Uh, 
Well, and it starts. Well, early. what happens is you have to just drive. Yeah, you have. You to just have to drive. trust they're going to get out of the way yeah. because if you swerve. They're, they're gonna, not ready for that. Well, yeah, because they are trying to avoid you, and you decided, nope. <laughs> You're like, I want you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so terrible. <laughs> it's like it's like how they say like it's hard like two people that are moving. It's harder to find each other than if one person <laughs> just stays still. Justin, why don't you why don't you ask Gabby the question you asked me and JJ earlier? Mm. Would you rather? I think it's a little flawed. I want to find the other better ones. I'm, I need Gabby's gut reaction to this question. I don't think I'm prepared <laughs> for this. I'm like a little out of it. So it's, would you rather? We have to adjust the number because it okay. has to. But would still, those are questions know. that are impossible. Ten thousand. Ten thousand. Would rather, fine. You'd rather fight way. ten thousand ant-sized bulls or one bull-sized ant? Ten thousand <laughs> ant-sized bulls. I guess. <laughs> then, or Could or, or a bull-sized ant. Cutting up a bull-sized ant. Can you, you imagine the fighting one? If they have like exoskeletons, like, like real ants, like they down? would be unstoppable. Is the is the is like the ant tank. already dead? Is no. it, if it's a bull sized ant, is it already is it dead? No, or no, do I, I have you're to fight it? You're for fighting you. it. You have to kill it. Yeah, I can't slay a bull sized ant. Ants are Here, here's, truly slay. here's something I trippy. <laughs> Gabby, Google image search uh ant close up. Nope. It's so horrifying. I was about to, but nope. It's it's like I can just imagine just straight up nice huge oh, eyes are gonna pop out at me. No, I'm it's not, not. I'm not okay. It's with not that. that. Oh, but if you have you ever, like we we talked about this before the X ray of the pug. It. Did you see that? The X ray of the pug. I we, honestly we, don't we, think we saw it, didn't we? They look they look angry. They look like angry. Oh, they, they look demons. They look evil yeah. for sure. Oh, okay. We need to do a ra little rapid fire. We got some good ones here. Okay. okay. First of all, I'm gonna show you this X ray of the pug because it's X ray hilarious. of a pug. Oh yeah, <laughs> this is, <laughs> it looks like a bird. So dumb. It's, it's, it's like a robot. So dopey. Are you gonna be able to put that up like on the video screen for <clears throat> the people because they need to know how stupid you are. <laughs> Silly little pug. <laughs> they do need to know. That. Google Google pug X-ray. Anyway, go ahead, Justin. All right, rapid fire. Don't think too hard. Just first thing that comes to mind. Would Love you rather it. have spaghetti for hair or sweat mayonnaise? Spaghetti, spaghetti for, for hair. hair. Mm. It's just like having. I feel like that's just like answer. having those candy know. necklaces. You just get to buy, take a bite off, and every now and then. Does it? Is my sweat actually mayonnaise? Is yes. That, okay. Sweat mayonnaise. Does it have meat and sauce on it spaghetti too? Spaghetti it for just hair. Spaghetti. That's a what happens? And yeah, it gets you, wet. You can. Soggy. It doesn't matter. It's about perception. You could always wear a hat to cover your spaghetti hair. Yeah, or throw it up in you a bottle. Sweat you're mayonnaise. You're ruining your hat. You, you start, start sweating. Bro, mayonnaise. you start sweating mayonnaise. <laughs> It's that's so pretty, embarrassing. It's gnarly. Okay, but yeah, spaghetti for hair, you can always shave it, right? Uh, you can yeah, go bald. Yeah, you just go J. Yeah, but well, the thing about it, you can't have a loophole. Okay. My question is, does everybody have to choose one, or is it just me? Because if everyone has to pick one or the other, there's two no, I'd probably camps. stick with the hair. So, no, but you're we, saying we if, <laughs> if there's one of the, So, yeah, say that there's everyone in the world... You'd oh. rather be with a bunch of sweaty mayo? Well, I would <laughs> say, no, no, no. if it's just me and I have to live like a regular person in society that doesn't have to make that decision also. Everyone's choosing. Okay, that makes me feel better. Then I might I don't do. think you do that. I think that's a way out. Because then it's like half the world's in your boat. You know what I mean? Like, okay, it so has to be individual. Me? Yeah. Oh, my God. It's like, which one would you do? I might just go. It I might. Definitely be spaghetti hair. Yeah, I'm doing spaghetti hair. Yeah. I'm not, I would, I'm I not would, sweating mayo. That's That's embarrassing. Not, not excitedly choose to get here. Here we go. Next one. Would you rather adopt a British accent every time you're having a serious conversation or laugh every time someone cries? <laughs> British accent for sure. That'd be great. Yeah. Like, can you imagine like just every time someone starts crying, you just lose you just, it. Yeah. I just cheesing. Do I don't know. I was kind of on the fence. <laughs> JJ. <laughs> Oh man! It's like you just call someone and you start Even with having kids, an accent. They're like, kids "Oh boy, gonna, your kids are gonna get pissed." <laughs> just yeah. laughing that would, at them. That, yeah. that would screw them up. Yeah. Okay. That's I hilarious. See, I could see British accent. All right. Would you rather talk like Yoda or breathe like Darth Vader? <laughs> <laughs> I know some guys that consciously have made that choice. I'm gonna go with talk like Yoda. Your whole oh, I would life. breathe Everything? like Darth Vader. Yeah, why not? I'd breathe like Darth Vader. Yeah, like there's Yoda, Darth I Vader. Talk. There's no way. You would lose your wife if you breathe like Darth Vader. Your wife, you would lose oh. also if talk Stop. Yoda like. <laughs> That's not. It's not even how he talks. Your life, would you lose? <laughs> your life, would you lose? 
Oh, this wife one's, would you lose? This one's interesting. Okay. Would you rather only be able to watch one show for the rest of your life or only be able to watch the first episode of any show for the rest of your life? Say that one more time. It seems like... Would you rather watch one show for the rest of your life, like the whole, the whole series, okay. or would you rather... But only that, or would you rather be able to watch the first episode of any show oh, the rest of your life? Because oh. you won't ever get to see what ultimately happens, no, but yeah, you get just, to watch all the different like plots and pilots. Just a show. Just one show. I agree. One show, probably. Yeah. I don't I know. know. And I would, I'd probably, I just get, one with like I'd probably be done after a year of it. on here, it'd be 24. He would do 24, yeah, 24. For sure. What would you do? <laughs> Which one? Yeah. Criminal Minds. Uh, Sorry. Not me. But there's Criminal a lot Minds. of episodes. There's a lot, yeah. Lost? I was thinking about that. You got a lot of screen Wait, time. But I'm gonna say Doyle's is the office. You might be right. <laughs> you Just might too be right, man. After after you've seen it like 50 times. Yeah, well, maybe some days I just don't watch TV. <sighs> yeah, it's not like you have to. <laughs> yeah. It's not like you have <laughs> to watch. Just saying, you got a long life left. The same show forever. Hey, maybe I that'd know. be good. I don't. If I, would, if I had, I would take one. more time to think about it. I would if too. it was yeah, if yeah. I was really in that situation. Criminal Minds. Ain't nobody going to kidnap me. <laughs> Would you rather accidentally like an old photo of your ex on Instagram or accidentally send a sex to your mom? I'd oh rather send a sex to my mom. Really? I would like. Really? I'd rather, yeah, I'd rather I'd like an like, old photo. I'd just be like, sorry, wrong person. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> <Sure. laughs> I think I'd rather just die. The fact Is that, that enough? The fact that like my mom would know that I'm sending that stuff would be horrifying. That's all right. She said worse to me probably. Okay. I mean, for me, it's like, I just don't want to deal with the follow-up conversation. <laughs> That's true. So what was that? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Someone grabbed my phone. It was, yeah, it was a prank. Someone was doing I don't a even prank. know what you're talking about. Oh, that's about. true. You could play it off that way. <laughs> but I did see someone on Reddit. It was yeah. like someone liked something from a long time ago. And like the girl messaged him like, why are you liking my old pictures, you creep? And he's like, you haven't looked good for a while. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. You're keeping it real. That's funny. <laughs> Okay, would you rather only be able to communicate via emojis or only to be or only be able to communicate via slang? Slang for sure. Slang. How do you communicate via emojis in person? Yeah, right. Like faces. It must be. <laughs> <laughs> Yours would just be happy all the time. I don't know how to do. <laughs> you how do you do face. angry? <laughs> I don't even. Do you know you know how to make that face? <laughs> Have you ever been angry before? <laughs> oh yeah. Right. You, don't, you don't like me when I'm angry. I've heard that before. Ooh, okay, Doyle, you'll like this one. Bring it. Would you rather live in the Harry Potter universe with no powers oh. or be a Death Eater? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> no powers. <laughs> yeah, it has to be that, but. I don't know. I'd, I'd want some powers. But I've, Death Eater's What's Death Eater? What is, what Those is are like that? the little uh, ghost things that fly around, right? No, and suck people's no, souls. no, no. Mm. Oh, is that the Voldemort's little gang? Yeah, a de that you're talking about a Dementor. I am talking about a Dementor. Dead Eaters are Voldemort's like following. Mm. Hey, 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 hey! I don't know. Don't speak of that. Still name. powers though. <laughs> he must not be. Named. And there's there's hope. You know, Harry. Some can, power. You're super. Are, does everyone else in that world have powers or no? No, no. A there's muggles. A lot of people don't have yeah. powers. Didn't we discuss muggles earlier? Muggles, half bloods, pure bloods. Oh, I see. I don't know anything about that universe. Uh, you've never seen what it? do you mean by that? Harry's a half. half well, I've, I've watched. I've watched. I haven't Harry's watched. I haven't watched all the movies. Muggle, but uh, pure blood. Both of his parents were. Some of those terms, the, like you know what I mean. Like I don't watch you subtitles, not, so I don't know what uh, any of this stuff's called. Like I don't. You know what I mean? You're a Hermione is a Muggle because both of her parents were just regular humans. But she's but Muggles can still have powers. But she's they a can. badass. They can. Are so going, Harry's both of Harry's parents were. Wizards and wizards, yeah. So he's a purebred, correct? So oh. Just going through the whole movie. That Pure makes sense. Bread, wizard, okay. Baby. Spoiler alert. Glad we figured had that to have out. Seen it by now. Spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, there is no such thing now. <laughs> All right. Would you rather go without deodorant? Oh, Harry. <laughs> would you rather go without deodorant the day you meet your celebrity crush, or run into them when you just rolled out of bed? Oh, roll out of bed. Oh for yeah, sure. I wouldn't mind that. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this: Do you have deodorant on when you just roll out of bed? Oh, because that's, that's the double whammy right hey, there. Hey, did you know that well, you're hey. supposed to apply deodorant before bed, not in the morning? I, I don't know if I'm huh. behind that. I feel what, like I've like heard what's that. What's the reason though. for it? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, when you say supposed to, is it like who's saying that? I don't know. Hmm. Probably Guardian.com. Guardian. 
Well, why can't you apply it both times? You can. It's not like it's fuck. I, it's not like. It's sorry. Not like, <laughs> there was no reason for that. I know. Just, it, but you, you just know ended me. a sentence with it. You don't need a reason. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I mean, and I, I do it before bed sometimes because I'll just smell. Then I just want to smell good going to bed. True. You just naturally smell. Well, I think no, I mean, if I'm like, like, if I was just like, consistently, yeah, it, it if I was like doing something it. outside with the pool right before I go to bed or something. Yeah. And then I go to bed and I kind of smell. I'm sure Christina appreciates that. Yeah. And then if I'm trying to like increase my chances of something okay. <laughs> happening. I'm sure the deodorant is really what puts it over the edge. Yeah, get it's those not, pheromones out into the universe. Because by the time yeah. it gets to the end of the day, my breath's pretty gnarly too. So I'm probably learning a lot about your personal hygiene right yeah, now. Yeah, you might as well just mm. knock out all that personal hygiene before you guys about to- I need to just stop drinking coffee is what I need to do. Yeah, um, that's tough. I know. Um, yeah, so she get a tooth. You can get a toothbrush for here and do like a, a midday brush after you're done with your coffee. A little midday brush. A little midday brush. Yeah. So every, every time I come like <laughs> over your shoulder, I always feel like I have like coffee breath. I'm just like, oh, Gabby's probably like freaking. She's like like moving this way as I'm talking to her. I'm like, oh shit, That's my funny. fault. I don't think so. I'll let you know. Classic. I appreciate that. All right, you want to do one more? Absolutely. I do. Okay. I'm glad you asked. Would you rather have a driver that takes you everywhere or a private chef who makes who makes all your meals? Chef. Oh, chef. No chef, doubt. Yeah, chef, for sure. For sure. I like driving too much. I don't. See, I don't mind I like cooking, and I would love to be driven everywhere. Yeah, I don't oh, mind. Okay. I don't mind driving. I get car sick if I don't drive. You like so just the optics of it? it up, baby. Like, hey, I got a driver. Like, you know. go on a date, like, you take a girl home, and you're like, yeah, my driver will pull up the car. She's like, ooh. That is a flex. Okay, but what kind of car you got? Does it come with a car? Every car. Your car? Well, <laughs> I got my driver from Ikea. I would say uh, even if I tough. could have any car with the driver, I'd still take the chef. Yeah, same. Chef for sure. Yeah. For chef. Mm, for I chef. I would. For chef. I don't even think I'd think about it. Yeah, that's not even something I'd think about. Um, But, yeah, so... 17 minutes in, we should probably talk about something being meaningful. Let's do it. Me- oh, that was mean- meaningful, meaningful, I think. I would agree. It was. Um, th- these are important questions that need to be asked, so I, I agree. Um, <clears throat> so I, I, basically what I want to talk about today is uh, end times, and they're, they're kind of wrapping that up Great. with apologetics. <laughs> just a slight, just just a light right topic. It. It's, I mean, so here's the deal. It's less of like... We're going to go through, you know, the book of Revelation and say like, okay, what do all these things mean? It's more so the idea of talking about it, period. Why Eschatology. What matters. Mm-hmm. Like, right. And I think Justin and I have talked a lot about this and it's just, it, you know, we, we find ourselves listening to like these, you know, quote prophets that talk about, okay, well on this day, you know, God's going to judge the country or this is going to happen or you know, it's it's this end of this calendar, right? In 2012, the Mayan calendar. Um, so, really, just trying to understand or what our thoughts are on why is it even necessary? Why do people get caught up in it? You know, like what's the point of getting caught up in it? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't um, know. I know, right? So, if you knew, this is like kind of a, I don't know if it's a would you rather, but it's more of a would you rather know when the end of the world is, or would you rather not know? Just as a person, like just aside from all the biblical stuff. Yeah, I'd probably rather not know. Yeah. Imagine that kind of like you'd be so cynical. I mean, just the anxiety, the stress. I don't I don't want I w- definitely don't want that period, but don't want that towards the end of my life if it's, if I'm going to see it. Yeah. It's true. Or devil's avocados. Mm, give it would to me. knowing give you a bit of relief? And know that, hey, I'm only going to be here for X amount. I'm just going to live it up the best I can. I mean, if it we was should like know that six regardless, months. though, right? If it was like six months. We all have be... an X amount, period. But if we know that it's going to be in f- five years from now. Do you, do <laughs> I you thought really that was know? another F-bomb. Well, I'm saying if it is. <laughs> right? Because I went skydiving. I went. Tim McGraw, shout out. Okay. Mm-hmm. That was quite loud. I'm Where saying. did that even come from? <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so lost on that. Isn't live that like the you were Live Like You Were Dying yeah, song? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. But I just, yeah. I went to so four if, if you knew, if you knew you only had a couple years, it's yeah. just like, screw, I don't want to know that. Screw saving any money. It just spend it all. Right. right. You know, just live it up. It's Agreed. true. Rob, Maybe I Rob just know, like, my level of anxiety, <laughs> that would just, like... That'd be what I think about twenty four seven every day. I wouldn't be able to like. But you know what? At some point, you'd let it go. I feel at some point you'd just be like, "It is know, what dude. it is." I'm yeah, gonna come to terms with it and about this. Well, the crazy part is, is we could all die tomorrow. 
Mm-hmm. Right. Or tonight. Just like Kristoff mm-hmm. said. And we don't we don't freak out about that. Someday we, we will actually all take die. that for granted. <laughs> Dude, I freak about I freak out all the time. <laughs> about that? <laughs> about what? Yeah, well, just about that thought. Yeah. Not me necessarily. Just about but dying. Anyone can just yeah. Oh, just about anyone being a, like having a the capacity to just die at any yeah. point. Yeah. You could just stop breathing. Literally. For a limited amount of time and you're yeah, real. Or just like mem- just like, you know, family or right. you know, who, yeah. whatever. But it's crazy. Like choking is one of the biggest things that I'm just like it freaks me out. Choking? Like you yeah. personally or like any oh, wow. like your kids. Any my kids especially. Why? But anyone. Because it's like I mean I'm pretty confident. You think about like I, I managed choke. to like live for thirty five years breathing, my heartbeat, and then like all of a sudden like something gets stuck one time and you're dead. Yeah, that would be Brutal. It's just that is brutal. I'd be more terrified of a car accident, though. Yeah, probably more likely. I get, yeah. I get scared. I mean, dude, I, I think Especially I, I think Florida. I think different more than people. But like, I don't even like my family like visiting me that often. I mean, they don't visit me all that often, period. But just because they don't like driving. But I think about that shit. I'm just like, mm-hmm. I'd rather just drive to them because what are the chances all three of them die in a car accident? Like, I th- I think about that stuff. Yeah, but like. If they're if they're coming here on I four, what are the chances they're going to die only going ten miles an hour in traffic? <laughs> I mean, that's that's true. Uh, thing is so no slow. One, no we just went mom, to Tampa for that concert. Tampa. I'm just like I, it just reaffirmed my hatred for Tampa. Yeah, but I you just, were in the peak. Like, like, yeah, you were in Tampa's you know, great. I have traffic. an opinion that Tampa traffic is worse than Orlando traffic. Oh, for sure, hands down. Anyone it's who says otherwise horrible. is crazy. Yeah, I mean it's because of I four. Half the people in Orlando work in Tampa. And so everyone's driving out there. And, dude, I mean, the traffic didn't stop. We didn't get there until 7.40. We got there an hour and 10 minutes after. I was after thinking about that. I was like, he's going to have planned. such a late night. What time did you guys get home? 2.30. Yeah. And, so, uh, and then that, you played racquetball at 8 o'clock. Your champion. Yeah, I knew it was coming. I knew someone was going to say that. <laughs> what? I made a dentist joke. Tooth hurt. Uh, I'm, I'll be here all day. So. So that's 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 basic dad joke 101. Luke's ready to have kids. Thanks. I appreciate that. So that's yeah. all you need. No, to have but kids. but yeah, so death and all that <laughs> fragile stuff, it's it's yeah, it's it's uh interesting when you contemplate, but then there are so many people though obsessed with like knowing when the end of the world is. Mm-hmm. And like well, reading through the, like reading codes and numbers into the Bible and it's all oh, this date and this signifies this and like this Nuclear explosion is really, it's, you can see it right here in Revelation, like, yeah. oh, it's happening all around us. And also, well, again, it's the danger of like tying, when you tie ministry to money, and it's like you got people that are like, so eschatology is the study of end times, and you have people who devote their lives to this stuff. And then they, like, they write books and they try to like, you know, pinpoint all these things that are happening in, in the world and like, oh, this is this scripture, this is this. And then you just freak people out. And it's like, what's even the point of, like we talked about it before. Jesus himself doesn't even know when he's coming back. Like, you really think we're going to figure it out? Like, But it, part of it, the too, narcissism in some people is insane. Sure. I agree with you. The The issue is, why put it in there in the first place? Put what in there? Revelation. Like, what's the point? I don't know. A bunch of dudes throughout the first 300 centuries decided it was a good idea to put it in there. Because there's a lot of stuff they kept out of the Bible, right? Mm-hmm. Like Enoch and, you know, all those other books that mm-hmm. didn't make it into the... Mm-hmm. It's kind of gospel Thomas. And what do you think? Stuff. What do I think? Why? Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. I was asking the question because I don't have an opinion on it, I guess. Um, I guess if I thought about it hard enough, I could come up with some kind of BS answer. Well, that's how I do it. Tricky, too, because it was written by <laughs> John when it's he was exiled life. to what the Isle, island of Patmos or whatever. So, I mean, John being like John the Beloved, the guy who wrote the Gospel of John, whatever, like I arguably Jesus' closest friend. Or most beloved, like yeah. disciple, you know, I could see the fact that he wrote it that the early church was just like this has to be a part of it because it was from John. I don't know. You think he was high on some of that island fruit? <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm just kidding. I, it's, uh, some of the some so of the symbolism is kind of crazy. Like it's just like you know things with three heads, all the beast yeah. stuff, and all. I mean, yeah, you're just yeah. like, all right, that's gnarly. Yeah, but. I don't yeah, even know. Could have been cracked out a little bit. Yeah, I I just don't even know what. How do you? Probably not. But <laughs> I, I mean, it it's just it, it's kind of like, is it just one of those hooks that they throw in there? Maybe just to like, hey, just so you, you know, so you're prepared. And this is kind of what the end is gonna you know look like. Mm-hmm. But then, but then people take that little thing that's really meant to just 
even though it has some graphic symbolism. Because Revelation really goes into like the actual like post rapture, right? It's like once that happens, or oh, so that's another whole. Isn't there a whole thing like pre-trib, post-trib yeah, thing about that? Definitely like is. where certain Christians believe that rapture happens before. Is that what they're talking about? The tribulation versus it's part of it. Oh, like the Christians get to miss out on the tribulation, right? Kind of there's thing. a lot. There's like separate schools of thought on if the people alive will be taken up before the rapture or. You don't feel like we're in tribulation right now? <laughs> Sometimes it feels that way. Well, I know. I used to have that fear of like when thoughts. I was like young and trying to like, you know, I don't know, had a hard time like really like being a good Christian boy all the time. And I would just be like, is today the day? I'd just like wake up and everyone's gone. And like everyone got off in the rapture. And then I'm just like here. And I'd just be like, and I would do a whole thought experiment. I'd just go down that road and be like, you know what? I mean, they left me some cool stuff. So, <laughs> I mean, worst case scenario. Like, a window into young Justin. Because wasn't it, I forget, what the Left Behind movie? I mean, it's been forever since I saw any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. But wasn't it like people who got left here still had another chance or something right. to redeem themselves? But I, the, it's supposed to be like a brutal death if you do get left here. It's a great way to scare people into brutal. What you're telling them to do. Oh, like, I mean, some people die brutal deaths. Without being yeah. going through well, that. Well, it, it was uh, at least the Left Behind series. It was this whole thing where, like, the people that, that didn't make it in the rapture that still, like, or ultimately realized that it was, you know, that Jesus did come back or whatever, like, they had to go underground and, like, refuse the mark of the beast. And then if they were found, they would be, like, you know, persecuted, essentially, or whatever. Here's a huh. thought. I don't know. The book of Revelation shouldn't be scary. Yeah, well, you're saying if you're on the right side. Right. Because even like people, the people that are obsessed about it, like really the book of Revelation, right the back. point of it, I would say, is to, <clears throat> like Jesus is going to redeem everything. So that's like a good thing. But all throughout however many years, people are horrified of it. And mm -hmm. when in reality, we should be like, hype about it so yeah i don't think that's talked about enough there's also Christian passengers you're afraid of it it's like why yeah you must is, not that, under. is that the book too that goes into like the the lampstands or the seven mm -hmm. it's like the seven different church churches and then like mm -hmm. jesus has a a letter to each of the or jesus like basically talks about <laughs> each one of the churches and where they kind of like miss the mark or mm -hmm. whatever you know so i guess i don't know it's good to I guess for point of reference, but I don't know. I also think about like the other popular parable that kind of talks about some of this stuff is, have you ever heard the parable of the five wise and five foolish virgins mm. towards the end of Matthew? I think it's Matthew 25, but it's basically like there's, there's 10 virgins that are supposed to be meeting or marrying a bridegroom or a groom. I don't know. I also total side question. Why not just groom? Why is he the bridegroom? Why broom groom is fine. I don't know. Maybe there was different types of grooms then. Let's find out. And specifically a bridegroom. Yeah. But there's also brides, but he's the bridegroom. But we just call him grooms. The bridegroom. Maybe all the the groomsmen are we really were also considered bride grooms. grooms. And we just dropped the first half because it was confusing. You're confusing me right now. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, in this parable, the whole point of it is there's five wise, five wise and five foolish virgins. And... Um, the foolish ones forgot to put oil in their lamps and then the wise ones had their lamps like ready to go with oil. Right. And then the, and then the groom or bridegroom comes like in the ready. middle of the night. Yeah. And it was like, yeah, basically the, the foolish ones just weren't ready. Mm -hmm. And they were trying to like ask other people for their oil. It's like, nah, oh, you know, it's funny. People think, own. people think that means money in their bank account based on the way a lot of Christians act. <laughs> um, That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, it's crazy because, too, it's like people take it far enough. I mean, this has to do with ego and all that. It has to. Um, but people will take it far enough to try to predict specific dates. Like, what what kind of balls you got to have mm -hmm. to be like, oh, yeah, it's going to be this date and this date. And it's just like, it's like you, you got some ego. Well, just I a mean, sensationalist it's like, type of... Like, who did... Like, how... 
I, I just don't know how that you get to that determination where you're just like have the confidence that that date is like okay, you heard from God or you whatever, right? Well, it just makes you. That is, I'm out. When and I it, hear and that. it just, it it's just, it, it cheapens the potential for any kind of real prophecy. Mm-hmm. Like, cause people are just like, all right, dude, whatever you say, you know, at that point, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but I have a list here. <laughs> it's kind of funny. 11 failed doomsday predictions. These aren't all religious. <laughs> this is funny. One was on my birthday. Really? Dang. Were mm-hmm. you hyped for that one? 2012. Wow. Wasn't it? 12, 21, 12. So you were... Mayan calendar. That's my birthday. The end of it. So your birthday was supposed to be the end of the world. <laughs> sure was. Wow. That's crazy. Dang. Yeah, dude. Um, Maybe <laughs> it was. Yeah, so there was about it. the prophet of the hen of Leeds. <laughs> Again, these aren't all religious, but this actually has, I think, a religious thing to it. History has countless examples of people who proclaim that the turn of Jesus Christ is imminent. Perhaps there has never been a stranger messenger than a hen... In the English town of Leeds in 18, 1806, seems the hen been laying eggs, which the phrase uh, Christ. Okay. It, the hen was laying eggs. The phrase Christ is coming was written. As news of this miracle spread, many people became convinced doomsday was at hand until a curious local, local actually watched the hen laying one of the prophetic eggs and discovered some someone had hatched a hoax. <laughs> That's crazy. Can you imagine? Wait. Dude, if you're, if you're someone who gets swayed by that, you got some things to worry about. You imagine that? So. Someone like taking those eggs, writing with a Sharpie. Jesus is coming. <laughs> it's like, it's all happened again. <laughs> it sounds like they there's, were just spelling just it out. Writing on the eggs? eggs? No, I, I feel like they spelled it out with no, the eggs. No, no, no. It was like the hen, like it was laying, uh, what was it? it? Had been laying eggs on which the phrase Christ is coming was written. What? Yeah. Okay, that's <laughs> people weren't as smart. Wouldn't it? Then. Wouldn't it Show be me like? That is and, wouldn't and it work. be more of like a Middle Eastern chicken? It was like it would have been Aramaic on it. You know, I love how we do that. You're just like, Christ is coming in English because Jesus spoke English. <laughs> it's just like we turn everything and you're just like, he must be coming. Jesus like, did speak nope. English. We covered that. Remember, um, the Millerites, April 23, 1843. New England farmer named William Miller, after several years of very carefully studying his Bible, concluded, this is, again, this is a farmer, <laughs> concluded, this mm-hmm. is not a philosopher or a well-studied academic, he, the, the, he concluded that God's chosen time to destroy the world would be de- divined from a strict literal interpretation of Scripture, as he explained, anyone who listened, <laughs> the world would end sometime between, unfortunately now, there's more people that would listen than ever before. Uh, and sometime between March 21st, 1843 and March 21st, 1844, he predicted and published enough to eventually lead thousands of followers who decided the actual date was April 23rd, 1843. Many sold or gave away their possessions, assuming they would not be needed. Although when April 23rd arrived, the group eventually disbanded, some of them <laughs> forming what is now the Seventh Day Adventist. Boom. Wow. Dang. Uh, Mormon Armageddon, 1891. Yeah, a lot of these are religious, actually. Um, Mormon Armageddon, 1891 or earlier. Joseph Smith, founder of the Mormon Church, called a meeting of his church leaders in February 1835 to tell them that he had spoken to God recently during their con- conversation. He learned that Jesus would return in the next 56 years, after which the end of times would begin promptly. Well, that didn't happen. So, and and we trust that guy with like, and the Mormons trust that guy with their Bible. Is like, Isn't he the one who the also one that, said that like he was the one that was all revealed to? Whatever. God gave him the tablets, and then he also found special glasses to read said tablets. Oh Is that yeah, that guy? I don't know, like a <sighs> decoder ring. Yeah, some people. That's like that's like straight national treasure. You're just like yes, the God of the universe is exactly how he wanted us. Need some it lemon out. juice and uh, cotton he swabs. He hid some special <laughs> glasses <laughs> somewhere <laughs> under the dirt. Yeah, they have the Declaration of Independence in the oven. <laughs> yeah, Wait, don't forget the lemon juice. Lemon juice. I know. I was just saying that. Use incredible. some lemon juice. Great hey, movie, though. Not sure. Yeah. Oh, dude, fantastic. <laughs> Haley's comet, nineteen ten, eighteen eighty one. Astronomers discovered through spectral analysis the comet uh, has included deadly gas called cyanogen. So it implies cyanide. This was a passing interest until someone realized the Earth would pass through the tail of Haley's comet in nineteen ten. Would everyone on the planet? be bathed in a deadly toxic gas. Speculation reprinted on abroad 
anyway, obviously that didn't happen. Pat Robertson, 1982. I find this fantastically interesting that anyone would be swayed by his prediction and realize it's wrong and then continue to like follow him. Like, yeah, that's the thing. It's just like, wild. it is. Yeah. But in, and so this is before, this is before we were all born, right? This is 82. I was born in 87. In May 1980, televangelist and Christian Coalition founder Pat Robertson startled and alarmed many when, contrary to Matthew 24, 36, no one knows what day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, he informed his 700 Club TV show audience around the world that he knew when the world would end. I guarantee you, by the end of 1982, there is going to be a judgment on the world, Robertson said. I, that's crazy. You've seen that guy, right? It's just so weird because, like... <sighs> You can read, I get it. You can read the Bible, especially the Old Testament, and you can get obsessed with this judgment, like just type of view of God where it's just and like, that's, and we really think the, God is yeah, watching us sorry. just like, ew, there's despicable humans. How could they do that? We need to wipe them out. And like, I can't, and, and like, also, if God is God, he could just like, he could just Thanos snap and just start over. Like, he doesn't need to like redirect a comet to hit the earth to like, I don't know. Some people are just funny. There's more here. Is like uh, Heaven's Gate that has to do with Haley Bop. Obviously, it didn't happen. Y2K was a big one because computers can't count past 2000. Um, May 5th, 2000, in case the Y2K bug didn't didn't do us in, global catastrophe was assured by Richard Noon, author of 1977 book, 5-5-2000, ICE, the ultimate disaster. <laughs> According to Noon, the Antarctic ice mass would be three miles thick by May 5th, 2000, a date in which the planets would be aligned in the heavens, somehow resulting in a global icy death. Perhaps global warming kept the ice age at bay. <laughs> so, okay, so in, it's, it's kind of interesting. It's crazy, yeah. Because you also see a parallel with, like, certain politicians, like uh, that brilliant little lady from New York, um, where they'll just be talking about, like, we have, like, 12 years left, like, basically talking about, like, climate and climate change and stuff like that and to me it's just the same stuff you're just scaring everyone into trying to like just do something for the sake of doing it wasn't there like scientists like handcuffing themselves to like major like just huge buildings like wasn't there one scientist that even lit himself on fire <laughs> i don't remember dude like, I'm, like there... pretty recently like in the past like this this year yeah, I'll be surprised. because people people have taken these so seriously uh, not just i mean they're there are several, like, because you have a huge weight. Like, if you decide to come up with something like that, people are going to kill themselves. Right. I mean, that's the, that's the kind of weight you have to bear if you're going to come out and say that I, you think the end of the world. I mean, that's, right. you have to understand. You have, you're, to you have blood on your hands. That, yeah. Well, it's like that whole, like, Greta Thunberg girl. It's just like, mm -hmm. I, I like, more than anything, I just, like, felt bad because I was just like, who is raising this girl? That it's like, go be a kid. Like, why are you, like, freaking out about, like, you're destroying the world that you're we're supposed to inherit. It's just like, well, she's well, she's autistic, right, or something like that. I don't know. She's Someone like, helps her figure those spectrum. things out. But I mean, uh, some like sometimes like people if they're I mean if they're isolated or if they don't really they just mature very fast and they just don't have that like childlike mindset. Yeah. Well, it's even like I mean I saw a clip. Have you seen that clip of Jaden Smith, Will Smith's kid, and like. He just talks about how he like he he always grew up around older people, so like he yeah. doesn't really vibe with people his age, because they'll just be like talking about like whatever, and he's like, "Can we talk about like the political and economic state of the world?" Yeah. And I'm just like, "No, nah, bro, like that's you're missing it. Like it's just like <laughs> you're just li it's like OJ Simpson. Just Hello, constant, Twitter world. Yeah, this this hey. constant like living in fear of what you can't control. It's like at some yeah. point you got to just enjoy your life, man. Yeah, no, I mean I I always grew up with older friends too, college kids. Uh, used to and still bug crap out of me. I never really went through that like frat phase. I hate mm. it. Um, but yeah, frat, I know you're saying. Yeah, I, I just grew up with normal people. It's just yeah. Sometimes I feel like I didn't really like try like experience that immature. I mean, granted, I can be immature, but like you know, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, God's Church Ministry, Fall 2008. According to the God's Church Minister Ronald Wineland. The end of times are upon us again. <laughs> His 2006 book, 2008, God's <laughs> Final Witness. 
the end dot com 2006 states that hundreds of millions of people will die by the end of 2006. There will be a maximum time of two years remaining before the world will be plunged into the worst time of all human history. By the fall of 2008, the United States will have collapsed as a world power and no longer exists as an independent nation. As the book notes, Ronald Wyland places his reputation on the line as the end time prophet of God. One of that guy is now. That's the, it's, that's the hard part. It's like all these people, like, I don't know. What do you, I mean, what do you do when you, when, this person really believes it. He's like, I'm a prophet of the Lord. And you're like, it, you know, it's crazy. Okay. You know, it's crazy. Well, it, it, it just doesn't it, match the book. Like, did you get so. like a, did you get like a card or yeah, something? Like, not, well, the thing is, thing. it's such a people, I, people want to believe this stuff Yeah. and it's nuts. Like, it's like they have a hunger for it. Mm -hmm. And so you come out confident enough, like people are just going to believe you. Even mm -hmm. if, even if your reasoning is bullshit. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, someone could just say something and then all of a sudden they get all these people follow them and then they start like drinking their own Kool-Aid and believing even more in what they think. Yeah. Right. Instead of if you have some kind of prediction, instead of like going to your peers and being like, hey, what do you think about this? Like, hey, this is what I thought. This is what I, I mean, most of the time that probably gets kiboshed like, you know, right. right away. But like these people that just kind of take it straight to the world, like, it's, 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 you know, people influence typically like that Pat Robertson guy. Um, Harold Camping, 2011. May 2011, radio preacher Harold Camping drew international media attention when his predictions that Judgment Day would come on May 21st kicked off by earthquakes around the, the global and rapture of the faithful. According to Camping, his dreadful day would be followed by months of torment, the end of the world on October 21st. When May 21st passed quietly, Camping retreated from the limelight for a brief time before announcing that Judgment Day had in fact come and gone on that date. Instead of physical earthquakes, Camping wrote on the website his radio station, Family Radio, May 21st brought spiritual earthquakes. <laughs> hey, I know this didn't happen, but there were still earthquakes. They were spiritual. Yeah. Albeit quietly and without fire and brimstone. That's... Oh, wait, no, he said, uh, wait, now camping contends that the end of the world and D come on October 21st, albeit quietly and without fire and brimstone. Yeah, so it's just funny. Like, these people, uh, it's insane. Um, and not even that. It's it's even like, I don't know if Jonathan Kahn ever gave a specific date on stuff, but when he has that Harbinger book, like, and, and his whole thing, I believe, and you can, I mean, you've read some of his stuff, I think you can correct me if I'm wrong, but his whole thing is like, uh, similar to, uh, I can't, I think it is Isaiah nine, uh, that chapter where it talks about the judgment on Israel. Mm. Um, so basically, you know, he takes this, he takes, he, you know, he, he looks at that and basically says like, okay, this is how Israel, this is God's view on judgment of Israel. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you say, um, and then he, he compares that to America. Like America has right. been, you know, uh, going down this path, you know, moving away from yeah. God, trying to like redeem ourselves in our own way, not right. trusting him. And like so, our actions are basically God is, oh, here we go. Another Christian. He's, he's removing his hedge of protection over America. Sure. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah. So it's just, for me, that's first of all, um, so, so it, it's just because it, uh, Isaiah is in the Old Testament, right? So this is before Jesus. Correct. So you know when when Jesus comes, he talks about how like you know everything's new, right? I mean this is you know this is this is kind of the new command. You know it just starts with Jesus. So, but then it's just like again how we talked about tithing, like picking and choosing what we want from the Old Testament that kind of fits our whatever we believe. Um, my problem with that is the fact that. Uh, so Jonathan Kahn encourages people to not be lukewarm, to speak up and take action, issues that affect the moral fiber of the nation. Um, I, I don't I don't know. Like, so when Jesus came and emphasized personal relationship with God at that point, I mean, it didn't, like, at that point on, it wasn't like, it didn't seem like God was in the business of judging nations anymore, mm -hmm. right? So Israel kind of, like, when, when you talk about Israel, too, and you call them about God, God's chosen people, right? Uh, it felt like there was just kind of like there was more expected of them. And it was that context in which it talked about, you know, God mm -hmm. judging them and bringing his wrath on them because of they have a responsibility and whatever. Right. And then, and, the, and then my thing with this is like, he's just saying America's the same. It's like, no, it's not the same. Yeah. I mean, you have people from all different, like 
all different faiths and religions and different parts of the world and stuff like coming to America. Mm -hmm. And that's how it was founded. It was founded on all kinds of different ideas. So I don't even think, I don't even know, like maybe in revelation, but it's just kind of like, it doesn't, it doesn't really address America, but like people try to make that leap. Like, and I just don't get mm -hmm. it. I just don't feel it's the same thing. Granted, like, you know, I mean, Hey, like, I don't, I don't think you run from God, but at the same time, it's just like, yeah. I don't think you scare people into saying that like, okay, you, well, you better turn back or God's judgment is upon us, <laughs> well, you know, the, as a nation. The biblical, I think, translation now, it's certainly not Israel is America, but the people of Israel is indicative of the people of God. So that's how you can kind of tie the dots there. Dude. So like that guy, whoever he's like, he's judging Israel. Now he's going to judge America. That's not, that doesn't make any sense because Israel at that time was the chosen people of God. And now that Jesus came and died for everybody. Now Israel is everybody. Yeah. If you you're, if saying? you're going to so, try to apply that now, it, you'd yeah. have to apply it just basically to anyone who professes himself a Christian. Well, really, everybody. Like the people. Well, the, and the part of the problem too. It's why? Like, why would it be everybody? Well, because Jesus didn't just die for the people of Israel. Like God, there is judgment. Judgment is still a part of who God is. So it's like, what's He going to come and judge if there isn't anything? Yeah, but I don't think. Right, but I mean, like the way these people talk about it, it's like. A, some kind of physical judgment that is going to come upon our entire nation because of it's like a right. consequence. Yeah, no, it's not right. I it's see just because not. we're just shifting as a, as a society, yeah. you know, more and more away from God. I yeah. heard a really interesting conversation not too long ago. And the guy was talking about basically he wasn't necessarily trying to argue for the existence of God, but rather like the necessity of God. And cause if there is no God, there is no real morality and everything is ultimately right. whatever we want it to be. But he was just talking about, he had a really interesting thought cause he was just talking about, I think he called it like the potted plant syndrome or something like that, where basically like regardless of, you know, how he has some really good facts and I, I he, the dude's pretty well known and, and he's pretty solid with his info. So I, I mean, would have to double check everything, but he, he kind of went down the road of like the reality is whether you agree with it or not, like America was built and for most of its existence has been based off of Judeo Christian principles, right? Mm -hmm. like biblical principles. And so he, he kind of used it in the sense of um, like when you take a plant and you put it like in water or whatever, like it'll, it'll look good for a few days or a f couple weeks, but eventually it'll wither and it'll, it'll die. Right. And he talks about how, you know, the more and more we shift as a culture and society away from kind of the culture that founded and created America, that like give it a few generations and eventually like, right. it'll just essentially America will die. Right. Not like not like we won't exist, but like America that as we've we always know known because yeah. we're already looking at. Right. We already have a massive push to really like. Like we were talking about the other day, UK, it's almost impossible to get any sort of gun. Canada just put a freeze on all handguns. So you got people that are, you know, talking about Second Amendment, stuff like that. You have certain people that think the Constitution is like a living document and it should evolve and adapt with time. Other people think it's just like it's meant to, and that kind of maybe parallels some with, with the Bible too. Some people. I mean, that, and so, I mean, it's in like a very basic sense. <clears throat> You're right. Yeah. It's the same people that believe the Bible is perfect and believe the constitution is perfect. I'm sure. And that everyone always goes back to the constitution to defend something that is in their interest. Right. And I mean, I like, I love, you know, the con constitution, you know, what the country was founded on. That's great. Um, I like but freedom and liberty. you'd have to be an idiot to realize that like these dudes that were sitting in a room 300 years ago, Mm -hmm. really knew what was going to happen mm -hmm. in, you know, 2020, mm -hmm. 2022, whatever. So sure. it's, you have to understand that that is a document that can be modified with, with, with appropriate due process. My problem is the, the, the process is flawed and it, it's corrupt and that sucks. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's a lot more difficult, you know, when you have that small group of guys that, that were responsible for writing the Constitution. Mm -hmm. 
or coming up with it. So it's just, there are definitely issues on both sides of that argument, but it's just, uh, like, yeah, you have to, you have to kind of hold it with an open hand and understand that if we're going to, if you believe in progress, which mm-hmm. a lot of people would say they believe in progress, you have to believe that it has to be a living document, right? I mean, it has to be changeable. Um, yeah, specifically related to like certain issues. Yeah. I mean, there's obviously nuance and stuff, but, um, but yeah, no, that's interesting. And I, I mean, I don't, you know, I don't think America needs to look the same way it's always looked. Right. Um, yeah, it, it may not be what the country needs to be. Maybe it needs to be something else. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I think that's going to be the the craziest part that in our lifetime we're probably going to see a lot of things change. Well, yeah, but then people, people uh, for some reason, people hold the Constitution and the Bible in the same, like, mm-hmm. if, if one changes, it puts the other one in jeopardy. You know what I mean? Like the Constitution, oh, we're talking about changing the Constitution. Uh oh, you know, you know, it's just like now we're, mm-hmm. you know, we're doomed to hell. Like it's just, I mean, it's crazy how how religious people are about the Constitution. Um, but anyway, digress. Um, th- th- this was this was also part. So the other part of this whole doomsday thing is when people leverage it and use it for their own profit, right? Like a lot of these people that scare people into whatever. So I just went to uh, buy my you know, book. Jim Baker show.com. So Jim Baker was the, uh, he was that televangelist that went to jail for a long time for, you know, cause he's had, he, I mean, dude, they sell all kinds of stuff. It's just like, they were selling those things that, you know, some rock, was it a rock? Do you know what I'm talking about? It was like know. something like people pray over. <laughs> oh, they, and then they, they did that with like, like <laughs> towels for a while. Oh my gosh. Like prayer hankies. Yeah. It's just like this, this, this has been prayed over by whatever. For for nine ninety nine, we'll uh, ship one to you. Just put it on your leg and good as new. Yeah, but it's funny because look at this store. Is is uh, how anti Bible is is this? So so welcome to the official online store, Jim Baker Show. We offer a wide variety of products, carefully selected by Pastor Jim and Lori Baker, to bring peace, joy, restoration, and hope to so much more into your life. <laughs> it's just like if that's what's bringing peace and hope into your life, yeah. like. You know, a, a you know a, a battery operated flashlight. You know, okay, <laughs> what the hell? I mean, something's wrong with your heart, right? Um, is that what that what like what what do they got on there? Well, let's find out. So, okay, this is this is good. Uh, one of these things in this list is select from our food survival and water products for preparedness items that will help sustain life through disaster and give peace of mind. This is on a televangelist website, right? It's like okay. I still too just think on all like, the stuff I'm sh- yeah so freeze dried meals you know and stuff like that for the food. Um, I just think you got to look at it as an adventure. It's just like if this is the end, like because I I know a lot of people who are just like not a lot but I know some people who are just you know should I stock up on this should I stock up on that I'm just like I'm just gonna kind of make like make it a big game if it really pops off like that and it really hits the fan like all right dude we're going full on like. What was the zombie show? Walking Dead. Just gonna well, get I mean, a great vehicle. A few guns. Yeah, I mean, samurai sword and, and for sure. You know what's crazy though? Like with the guns, and it's just it's kind of crazy because a lot of times it's the religious people that fall into that category, right? Because it's a right wing ideal. But when you look at the guns thing specifically, and with this like preparedness, because you know a lot of people that are doomsdayers. Um, I mean. You're supposed to find your trust and security in God. Mm-hmm. Not that you shouldn't be prepared, but at the same time, it's like, you know, I mean, if if the shit hits the fan that hard, you, I mean, what are you prolonging your own death? Like, I mean, because yeah. it, it, you know, it ain't gonna get better for you. You just get to watch, watch everyone else get eaten. And you want to like right. shoot each other? That's what you want to do. You want to shoot yeah. each other for food? Is that like? Right. I mean, almost. I'd almost rather be unarmed. You know, with nothing. No mm-hmm. one's going after you, right? Instead, like. I mean, the things that people do for peace of mind and security, right? And the fact that they can't find that within, within the, their spirit, like, is problematic, for sure. Because then you just are basically a bunch of hypocrites. It's just like, why, why do you believe in? I mean, granted, like the secular person that chooses to build a bomb shelter, you know, do what you ever want, whatever you want to do, man. But like Christians, actually, like you know, people who you know believe in God and all that, they're supposed to like you know 
find hope in in that, like in, in their yeah. security and safety in that. Not that I mean, you still can't die, or you know, you're you're not in danger. I mean, stuff like that can happen. But I mean, obviously, you know, faith is supposed to go beyond this life. I mean, it, it's just I I I think it's just so hypocritical in a way, and it's just like why why it, to me it just feels like it's a reason why all these like end times predictions are so popular. It's just because people just want to know, so they have this peace of mind or something. Like I guess they they try to like. They just want to know all the information and like as in you know hey i want to know exactly when i'm going to go and you know when the rapture's coming and all this and live my life the way i want to all the way up until the last day of the exactly. rapture <laughs> skirt in there yeah it's just, <laughs> just made it um but yeah interesting thoughts um so the other thing i want to talk about was apologetics which i don't know it's not it's not really in the same category but we talked about doing this just as another um, thing that we could talk about in this hour um, ish because we'll go over. Uh, so, I mean, I don't know. What are your thoughts on apologetics? You know, what apologetics like, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh -uh. yeah. So apologetics is basically like people that will come in, um, have a lot of like, you know, science backed reasons why, you know, Christianity is legitimate it basically, it, it, the trying to explain things logically and empirically to to understand that hey, Christian faith like really you know makes sense. It's in line with science, and it's not something that's you know nuts. I mean, granted, uh, they can say all these things about the age of the earth, you know, this and that, and like all the you know the minerals and whether this you know has a certain age of this and whatever, and you know, understanding like how that how that is, and then understanding some personal things like you know our personal revelation on why, you know, we think that there would be a creator and stuff like that, but none of it's going to bring you to a hundred percent. That's the thing. It's like, so there is an element of faith. that's always involved in believing in anything like that. Um, but really it's just, it's just really, like, there's a lot of people who are, and I would call myself skeptical in that category to where like, I like, I like to know about things. I like to find out, you know, investigate and whatever. So, I, I tend to, you know, there, there's a lot of the apologetic conversation that I find really intriguing. And I like, Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, there's some of it that's just like, it, it's, it's a lot of times it's like, they try to form such airtight arguments and like this and that, and this and that, and like, there's just, there's just too many things. And you're just like, well, I, I, I you know, again, it's just like some of the reasoning is just kind of gets a little cheapened. Um, but Ooh. I think it's great. I think it's great for people who are like, look for that. Like, cause there's a lot of analytical people that require that, you know, as yeah. part of their pros and cons for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So who do you think it's who do you think it's meant for? Mm. Um well, like a good apologetic or a bad apologetic? What, what it, at its at its core, what's the heart behind it? Who who is it meant for, I guess? I think at its core it's meant to um encourage the faith. I think at its worst it's used as you're you're dumb for not thinking this and this is obvious and um i can figure all this out cuz i mean if you're talking about <clears throat> like if you sit with someone and they can explain every avenue of god then what then they are god you know what i mean so there's there's not a human being who can understand everything. Yeah, and, and I, that, I would hope there's people that aren't claiming that. Right. Um, so there, those, but I do think it's valuable. Like I've learned a lot from certain apologetic conversations and stuff that like kind of back up. It's kind of like, why do you believe what you believe, right? Yeah. And so some of that's really helpful and intriguing for sure. Yeah, it's it, and it's it talks. Paul talks about you know always having a defense, uh, right? And, yeah, the problem does come when people turn that into an offense. Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I totally get that. Yeah, it's just hard for me. I'm trying to just look at it just, just objectively. And, like, to me, it's just if someone if – you, if you even have to give a defense for your faith, it's almost just like I don't even need to have this conversation. Like if someone is coming at me 
And then, but then again, I'm also not trying to convert people to my religion. Well, at this point, part of it because I'm trying to figure it out for myself. Yeah. So and, is the, I guess, part of the thing for me too is like you mentioned, like if there is no ability to get to hundred percent confidence that I know that this is the real God. Like I just, how do I square the circle where he he just the, he expects me to devote my life to him, the only one that I ever get. And I, and there's no way to just actually know that it's really him. It's like, okay, so you want my whole life and I have no way of really knowing whether you're real or not. There's always going to be some level of just like hope or, and if there's always a little element of that, then at least, I mean, is there going to be a little element of doubt? Like, I don't, I don't know. I have a question. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, yeah. So what do you, what do you specifically want? Or how do you want God to show you that it's real? Like if you could choose, I guess, I what are you looking for? Like, it doesn't have to be any specific way, but I guess it just, when I read it and it's like, if this is, if my relationship with Jesus is, is supposed to be the realest, most intimate thing that I experience on this earth, like maybe I was just doing it wrong. Maybe, and here's maybe the other part of the problem is I was in communities and surrounding by surrounded by people who were like i'm pretty sure these people are a hundred percent like they're all like they're there and i like just didn't know how to get there mm -hmm. you know and i don't i don't know why but it's almost just like when i, when I just try to like think about it it's like it's not hard for god to reveal himself to us if he wanted to do you think and i he feel hasn't? like we kill ourselves i i think maybe like, I think all of this, I think that's something that we love to do as Christians is like, we love to take something that's ambiguous and just pile together a bunch of circumstantial evidence and just be like, boom. Now I like, I know he's real where it's just like, yeah. well, not, not everyone know. does that. There's a lot of people just with the simple understanding of their faith. They don't really need anything. They don't need apologetics. I mean, just, and that's their personal revelation and their personal experience that they had. You yeah, know, and I they think, don't need it. I think boil boil it down more than anything else. It's like I want if if there's really a God that created all of this and our and and we're meant and we're literally on this planet to connect with him, then it's like I guess I don't know. I just I always come back to this point, but it's just like I don't want to do it through this book. And I don't I don't think like that doesn't even seem like I have another question. Yeah. Do you think the book is the only thing that shows God's footprint. No, I mean, I think a lot of people can look at creation and just say like, Oh, this is fa you know, fascinating. I think, I think if anything, we talked about this earlier, but it's like sometimes the apologetics or that whole world can almost provide as like this, like not like a band aid, but it's just like people don't really like dive into that, like, that like search or that soul kind of exploration to really wrestle with what do I believe about how we got here? Is it really that important? Do I only believe this because like, I don't want to go to the bad place. Like, am I really passionate about connecting with God or is it just like one big, like I grew up this way. A lot of people do it. It's just convenient. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. It's just become such a convenient, like addition to our life where in the, you know, in the scriptures, it was like their whole life was this the church and community. And I feel like for most of us now, it's just like a part of our life. So it's like when you really read what they're going through, it's like, ah, like you kind of get it. But at the end of the day, it's just like we have very different like priorities almost. I think people need to unwind and, and find things out for themselves a lot of times. I mean, you can't just go through life being told what's up and have no experience of it yourself. And if you mm -hmm. don't, then that's, you're not going to find a place where you're confident in your faith. Right. So mm -hmm. basically apologetics can get you to 98% and then you just need some DMT to take you the other 2% <laughs> the toad or whatever. Dimethyltryptamine. Rogan always talks about. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause I was in the car the other day, we were talking about something, I think on the way to Tampa and traffic and she was just like, and we were talking about hell. I was like, yeah, I don't think it's, I don't think it's like a physical place. And you know, she was just like, what? I was just like, well, I mean, hell's just described as eternal separation from God. It doesn't say it's like 
You know what I mean? Like they use symbolism to describe how that would feel without God. Yeah. Where is it? It talks about like the gnashing of teeth or whatever. Well, again, that's symbolism used to like describe what, what your experience would be life eternally separated from God. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's just like we, I think we read into it that it's a physical place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think again, like it's just, what do you think, Luke? Mm. I don't know. Physical as in like this room is a place. Yeah. So like do you the, think heaven's a physical place? I think heaven is another dimension. Yeah. So I would, I would probably say on put it on the spot. I would probably say it's, it's not physical in the way we perceive physical. That's good. That's, I can get on board with that. So I would say yeah. it, it is a place that probably we can't really fathom what it looks like. But a lot of people do think it's like, it's not like, it can't be like, like what is it? Uh, matter, time, and space. Yeah, it's outside of that. So, mm -hmm. your guess is as good as mine. Well, I do, do you think? Do you think heaven's outside of that though? Mm hmm. With exceptions of because it says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. <clears throat> right. So you think heaven's outside of space time, but the earth's inside of space time. Right. Space, time, and matter. Mm -hmm. It's it's kind of like Cause this it, is actually where apologetics has helped. Because you wonder alternate dimensions if it if they don't may not need to follow the rules of space time anyway. Mm -hmm. Our universe. Yeah, because God exists outside of those things. But he also exists amidst them as well exactly so it's like it could heaven could be all around us we just can't perceive it with our senses that we currently have sure which heaven there's been times biblically and you could say now where heaven there are moments where like heaven touches earth or whatever the holy spirit plays a part in that too yeah no it's definitely something cool to think about yeah it blows my mind blows my mind for sure too i'm here for it though yeah. yeah, it's just tricky. I mean, we, we've we talked about in the past of like, you know, it's it's dangerous to project, you know, human emotions or human kind of experiences or interactions onto God and your relationship with him. And I think in the same way, it's like all of these things we're dealing with are like by nature supernatural. Right. And us as natural beings have five senses. We try to use our natural se like senses to explain supernatural phenomena. That's a good that's a good no, we can't and we just can't summary, do it right? like it's just like you're just apples and oranges we're just even the way don't... we think is limited to what it could be so well, like that's for the why... first time ever i'm like is it a physical place but my mind can't really get to what i really think it is well and that that's why so much of it for me i always come back to just the word like perhaps and like if i get in a conversation with people i'm just like okay yeah maybe it's nothing it's wrong like, with saying that either i mean it's... but but that's the thing a lot of people think that well, Christians I think it's wrong to be open minded. A lot of Christians think that they have to have it like they have to have an opinion on everything. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Even when they don't know anything about it. It's just like, it, you know, it's one of those like, well, do you think it's this or this? And they'll just be like, ah, I don't know. I think it's this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, well, you've never done any study on this. So you should probably just say, I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, there's been a lot more of people encouraging people to say, I don't know. And I think that's good. Mm -hmm. But, um, but yeah. I, yeah, I mean, we talked about it earlier about the whole Rob Bell deal when huh. he came out. He was a pastor, for people who may not know, who kind of evidently went on his own journey and landed at this place where he didn't think that God, a loving God, is that essentially a loving God that, that wouldn't send people to hell or something like that? Yeah. I forget. I don't know. I don't know the exact thing, but it was essentially that um, either hell wasn't real or it's like God wasn't sending people there or whatever. And I remember I was a lot younger, but I was in pretty, you know, pretty small like Christian circles. And it was just like, <gasps> everyone was like, heretic, Freaking out. blasphemy. What did and he was, say? God he wrote does. a book called Love Wins. And yeah, I should have done, like, I should have done a little more research on exactly what the message is. But I think the message is essential, essentially that like an all loving God either wouldn't send someone, uh, like send someone to hell or, or something along those lines. I don't know if he just, it just got to the point where hell wasn't necessarily real. I don't know, but it was something where, mm -hmm. and obviously it started a massive uproar within the Christian community. Um, what do you think? Do you think God sends people to hell? I think 
I mean, according to scripture, if people end up in hell and God created the whole system, I mean, that's the hard thing. I feel like sometimes we do this like mental gymnastics to like, cause I, I was that guy. I was just like, hell is just the place you can go to pay your own debt if you want to, but Jesus already did. It's like, well, that's like a nice way to say it, but the guy that created the system and then you ultimately end up in the bad place. I don't know. It's just, it's hard. Like I just, I don't know. Just looking at it. I, Cause I've been, for, I've been, I've been told or seen something. I don't remember from what, but like everybody that lives <clears throat> And then people always point out the outliers, and I don't know what to say to that right now, but there's, like, everyone's given. I think the reason you can't get to 100% certainty, not you, just people in general, nobody can get to 100% certainty, is because, like, I heard it put, put like this. If, you're, if the judge gives the jury a, like, they have to make a decision, right? He casts the jury to make a decision. The people of the jury don't know for certain what happened. They mm -hmm. weren't there. They have to collect evidence and then beyond a reasonable doubt have to make a decision mm -hmm. based on the evidence they've gathered, right? And then, because they'll never know. So even in regards to like the most important court decisions, legal matters, X, Y, Z, whatever you fill in, mm -hmm. we don't hold the 100% to anything other than does God exist. And so it's interesting because if you take that example and put it to human life, it's like, okay, however X amount of years Luke lives, he's going to be presented with evidence, right? Of the existence of God, of what he should do with that knowing knowledge. And then Luke should have a decision based on that evidence, whether or not he accepts the fact that that's the way it is, or if he chooses to not, and then I heard God doesn't, and, and this just lines up with what I think is how you can handle questions like how could God be all loving but send people to hell, and I think the answer to some degree is that he doesn't send people to hell, and he doesn't want anyone to go to hell. He's patient so that everyone can be saved, but if you are presented with all this evidence and knowingly choose otherwise, then you are denying God, right? And so then hell is basically just like God's wrath is giving you what you ultimately desire. So that in a way that's all loving because he's not forcing you to do something you don't want to do. He's in a loving way saying, if this is what you want, this is what you can have. Right. So it's, yeah, I hope that made sense. Cause I was kind of going off, but no, yeah, I feel you. And I, I mean, like people think God is just like hell, heaven, hell. And for me, it's, please everyone come to heaven and the ones who choose not to, it breaks his heart. And I think that better represents the character of God's heart than what people go most of their lives thinking. Yeah. I said, Bell denies that he's a universalist. So I think people read into the book that he's a universalist, meaning that everyone's saved. Um, but he, he, so he said he doesn't embrace any particular view, but argues that Christians should have a room for uncertainty on the matter, hmm. which I mean, I think definitely, like I just, I just mentioned. It's just so hard because, like, I just think about real-world examples of, like, what happens if I was raised in a Muslim home and, like, they don't really do good with people leaving the religion. You didn't never had, you never felt like you had an opportunity to choose. Not so much that, but I think about the people in the world now who are just, like, in fear of even questioning their faith because it's maybe – demonstrated them maybe a little oppressive or for sure there's just fear of walking out or leaving thing. where yeah right. if, if you deny that faith you know you get disowned by the family or even potentially right. even worse you mm -hmm. know something you know over over in that area like they hunt christians over in certain parts of the world so <laughs> it's just like to me it's crazy because it's like i agree a loving god would want everyone to be saved but it's just like i just think about it practically like Practically, so hell just gonna be full of great people that just like maybe were too afraid to to walk away from their religion and give Jesus a shot, or 
like good people that just didn't figure out like the Gandhis of the world who maybe saw the supernatural in a different way or didn't have the same experience or, or well, the, the whatever. What's freeing is those people who grew up Muslim or whatever, fill in the blank. Like we never know the state of their internal. Right, right, right. And so who's to say anything, but I know for a fact, something that gives me peace about stuff like that is if I want, because, you know, I'm a loving guy. I want everyone to be saved. I want to have a party in heaven with all four of us doing a podcast. It's going to be great. <laughs> we'll have Jesus on it. It's going to be sick. <laughs> but, like, if I, if my heart is that, how much more is God going to pursue those people, too? And so I, I'm i to the point now where, like, I think we as humans need to do whatever we can do to make sure everyone is presented with the the gospel and can make their own choices. But I also believe however hard we're working as humans, God's working overtime to pursue those people in ways that we can't like the Holy spirit's a real deal. And so if there's a Muslim person who's 15 years old and is, you know, persecuted, if he maybe, mm. you know, God's there too. So it's like, maybe, you know, like I hold on to the hope that somehow, mm. some way God's not going to, Right, like throw someone in hell who really doesn't want to be there. One thing I have a hard time reconciling is just people who, people who are in places that have never heard, like will live and die and never hear anything mm -hmm. about Jesus, about anything, about God, about whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we talk all the time in church, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, like, okay, like these people aren't going to confess with their mouth ever. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, I mean, so... You could say that, like, th there's, there's, like, an argument where it's like, well, they know in their heart that there's God and all that. And I'm just like, well, Jesus is kind of a complicated idea. I mean, honestly, it's not just simply that he's... Well, it's a tough psychological it's, hurdle to it's even not just sometimes. It's not just simply, like, there's a God, a creator, and he exists. It's like, well, here's this whole thing about sin and why we're like, here. And, because and you're born, your redemption wicked. story. Yeah. This is why we need Jesus. And so it's like, it's complicated. And, sure. And, you know. How do those people get presented that? Yeah. Well, it's tough, too, because it's like the book, the book comes and was birthed out of a, out of a part of the world and from a people group that, like, there was a lot of suffering and life was hard. So it's like you have this, these themes throughout scripture where it's almost like the more you suffer, like the more reward you're storing up type of a deal. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what if, like, I just think about it. It's like, what if we're just not put on this earth to have to suffer for God? And it's just, these people just happen to, because they were in deserts and really like rough areas. But it's like, what if we just like lived in like the rainforest and we just had fruit everywhere. And you're just like, I mean, we've talked about it before, but that's like, it's just really interesting to me that a lot of those like deities or like religions that come from different places of the this world. It's like that in those kinds of places, big emphasis. the fruit grows and it says Jesus is coming and it's written on the fruit. Yeah. That's what inside of, you got the inside of the banana the peel. Inside yeah. of the peel. No one ever reads yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I was Just really trying it. to follow. I'm kind of confused. Are you saying like, what would it be like if life so, was perfect? Well, yeah. Well, you just see in different like religions where maybe it was more or less like, like Mayans or people that were more so in almost like rainforests, really like lush green, like healthy areas or like Egypt when it was like kind of at the height of its, you know, you know, kingdom during that time. And like Christianity, or at least, you know, the roots of it really come from like people like the Israelites in like God's people, but they were always like enslaved. They were always like wandering in the wilderness and they had to go to Canaan and like, to like take over all of these like city states and all these other nations. And it was like just this, like this warring nomadic tribe that was just like trying to find their home and their place. And they came in and take over the promised land or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's like, it makes sense then that the religion in the, and then the book it's, there's just this massive, like, <clears throat> under theme of just like suffering and suffering is good, but it's like, then you have other tribes where you come from and they, you know, they're still, I mean, gnarly people cause people are crazy, but it's like the, the, there isn't just this massive emphasis on suffering. Cause it's more just an emphasis on like just gratitude to whatever gods we believe in because 
of the rain and the sun and the plants and everything. So it's like, mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, gratitude is obviously a massive part of Christianity too, but right. it's like, there's just, you see it a lot in, um, in like Islam as well. I'm not really equating the two, but like in Islam you have, you know, 77 virgins. If you, if you, is it what is that? That's if you go off into jihad, right? Yeah. Something kind like of a that. thing. If you die in the Holy war, yeah, I'm not like, going to claim to know that. I don't know if you, yeah, whatever. Obviously, two very different religions, but all I think about is the family guy thing where it's like <laughs> he goes to heaven, 77 versions. They're all playing. It's all like dudes playing World of Warcraft. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy's like, so Osama. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Justin, do you think that those religions, even though they might not focus on suffering, they still suffer? I like, think for sure suffering is just, I mean, there's going to be like suffering of life where everyone suffers. Right. Right. Well, if there wasn't suffering, there wouldn't, we wouldn't be to, to understand what's good. Right. It's tough. Cause even when, you know, it just takes such a hard stance against like the materialism and all that stuff, which I understand. Cause it's, again, there's a very fine line between loving money and just like, like, cause what they say, like sin is like the love of money, but it's like, you can, you can like money a lot and have a healthy relationship with it. It doesn't have to be sinful, but right. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I wish there was no money. I wish it was like, everyone just, just like did their part, tending the garden, taking care of the horses, mm, whatever. Only. And then we just like, yeah. Hung out. No, I know. We didn't that's need why, money to buy stupid things. I know. That's why more and more. I'm just like, when I just get quiet and I just tune out all the noises and I just like just get to a little place of peace. It's just like, like do yep. we live in this world where now we're just wasting all of our, or not wasting, but we're spending all of our time so that the last like 20 years of our life can be comfortable. Yeah, I guess. No, I mean, that's why I appreciate the place we're at now to where we can just kind of enjoy life while we work and do all this and you know, I mean, mm -hmm. I think that's important. Um, yeah, I guess. Yeah. I could totally be down to just like Island life, you know, I've, <laughs> I've thought that so many times Go fishing, you just <laughs> like have one, you have one emergency cell phone that you just, maybe not cell phone. Maybe Flip forget phone. that. Just a flare. <laughs> all right. Some, some contingency. You just live on the Island by yourself. Yeah. Someone comes and picks you up on their chopper, man. Be so cool, dude! I could do it, man. I could do it. I could do it. I could Simplicity. Do it. After watching, dude, I'm telling you, after watching that thinking Zach Efron show, and he went to that so one, sick, that yeah. one little tribe, and I forget where in the Central Americas, but it was just like, was it Costa Rica? Everyone just dipped. I, maybe it might have been. I think it's also where they did the schooling. Yeah, and even that was fascinating. It was like, fascinating that they, like, they let the older kids kind of teach the younger kids, and they didn't separate them by ages. JJ doesn't think so. You watch that one. You gotta watch that one. It's pretty good. I didn't see that one. JJ hates Zach. He's pretty Zach Efron hater. No, yeah. dude. <laughs> he's fine. You need to be a little more open minded about this, JJ. Yeah. All he's right, great dude. I do think there's ways we could teach kids better. The most effective way to teach kids is not standardized testing. <clears throat> well, who fair. who talks about like uh, if if like Abraham Lincoln were to come back, like the only thing he'd recognize is the public school system, <laughs> or something along those lines. <laughs> like someone from like a hundred years ago, they're just like ah. Uh, so I've changed this a bit, huh? Okay. <laughs> they got like cars and yeah, all this. They got cell phones and we're still doing the same thing. No, and it, it goes back to that constitution thing where it's like we just think that this is an, an immobile document. Mm -hmm. This is crazy. Dude, I had a guy come in when I was in high school to a polyrad class and he just writes on the board, JERUSALEM in all caps. And then he just goes and circles the USA right in the middle. <laughs> No way. <laughs> yeah. Are you serious? Because there's like three letters on either side, and then it's like, because it's J-E-R-U-S-A-L-E-M. -E oh, my God. Jerusalem. And he just circles the middle three, and he's just like, God's chosen nation. Like, it, it was just the funniest thing. <laughs> and he's serious, right? Oh, he's dead serious. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that was the whole, it was political radicalism. And so we just had <laughs> people like, from all over the spectrum uh, come. Uh, dude, we had I, a can't, PETA day. I can't sigh hard enough at that. <laughs> Just so funny, though. Oh, but I think horrible. part of that too is just people want to. It makes them feel good that like we're we're chosen, 
Like if some people are chosen and some people are not chosen, nobody wants nobody to be wants not to chosen. Feel not chosen. Yeah. So it's like, no, I'm on the winning team. No, I'm on the winning team. Everyone, we're all favorite. human. We're all on the winning team. That's yeah. how people need to look at it. Well, that's yeah. But that's a that's pretty that's a pretty it. liberal mindset. So I shouldn't say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, that's, Oopsie, I mean, it's all interesting. These are things that we're just going to continue to talk about on these podcasts. So, um, anyway, it's almost an hour and a half. So, thanks for hanging in there with Can us, everybody. I it is, yeah. And uh, we will catch you on the flippity.